Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're going to work on the cover for Nutcracker. So I have fussy cut and put cardstock on the back of these elements, but I'm going to go over them individually and let you know what's going on. Um, we're going to start with a 12 by 12 collection. We're going to cut it down, and you know what? Uh, let me tell you what I did. Okay, sorry. I have pieces everywhere. So I started with the 12 by 12 and I trimmed out the center. Okay, then I laid it in my trimmer and cut right here the bottom part. I'll tell you what it is. Um, her from the tip of her toe to the edge of the paper is a half is it is that right? A half inch? No, a quarter inch. So from the tip of her toe to where I trimmed was a quarter inch up. And then I laid it back down in my trimmer, put this at seven and a half, and then cut off more on the top. And that's important because you do wind up cutting through some of the, the curtains here. Okay, so the next thing I did was on the second sheet in the DCE pack, I fussy cut out the drapery and I put one layer of cardstock behind it. So this is gonna allow me to bring the drapes down lower and um, keep most of the design from the cover intact. So this is nine and a half by seven and a half. Let me verify that because something looks off. <laughs> Actually, this is nine. by seven and a half. So I'm actually gonna to have to take an eighth of an inch off here on the bottom. So it's nine by seven and a half. And the reason it's nine is, I'll pull this back in, is the drapes come out and I didn't want this or I didn't wanna cut through a half inch of this. So I just cut it out inside um, the frame here. So that's why I didn't do it at nine and a half inches if you're, if you're wondering. So to compensate for that, I may wind up double matting this, but I haven't decided yet. So, so far we've got the base from the 12 by 12 trimmed down from, to a quarter inch, and this is cut exactly off this edge, right? Trimmed a quarter inch from her toe, and then I tr trimmed off more of the top. And you can see basically I cut through this bow. Okay, so then I fussy cut this to go here. You'll definitely use both of these to make the cover if you do it the way I'm doing it. Then I fussy cut her out of uh, one and she is on a single layer of cardstock. So she's going to be at the same layer as the drapes. And then the nutcracker, unfortunately I couldn't get his whole image in. His image is seven inches and when I tried to adjust it you wind up seeing the second nutcracker behind here. So I wound up cutting him off just below the knees. He's on two layers of cardstock and that's because it needs to rest on this layer and also uh, by design, he's supposed to be in front of the drape. Okay, so that's what I've done. And those are the major elements of the cover. And then down here, you can see there's part of a word nutcracker, and I'm coming up with different ways to cover that. One is I fussy cut this out, and I was trying to decide if I wanted to use it here to layer, but it doesn't seem to fit just right. So an alternative is um, this is the nutcracker suite from the 8x8 collection pack and I'm liking that better but I haven't finalized my decision on that and then I'm going to throw some ribbon I've got some of this peachy peachy pinky ribbon that I'm going to use on the cover as well so with that that's most of the design for the cover so I just wanted to kind of share show that with you so again fussy cut out the drape just as is from the inside Okay, you're going to trim off the bottom at uh, seven and, I just did seven and a half for now until I lay it on top of my um, book and then I'll make a decision if I'm gonna shorten it a little. And then fussy cut out your nutcracker and fussy cut out the dancer. And then this comes from the eight by eight pack. So I'm gonna set all this stuff aside. I'm gonna pull my book in. I'm gonna make a decision about whether I'm gonna put a, uh, a mat behind this. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I finalized my decision. So what I've decided, remember we're a half inch short over here, is to use this strip, which is cut from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I'm not, it's, so there's the flip side, which is the green words. And I'm gonna add that little strip over here to the side to finish it out. I forgot to ink it. So I'll do that while I'm talking. 
And um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my base down, and then I'm going to add my layers. And I don't know what I did with my ink. <laughs> so maybe I won't put that down yet. We'll go ahead and start with this. I'll get my loose pieces down, and then hopefully uh, my ink will emerge. It's here somewhere. I just used it. Okay, so all I um, wound up doing was trimming this in height to um, seven and three eighths, and it's going to lay right here on top of our seven and a half by nine and a half inch cover. And I don't know why this is not flowing very well. Might be time to clean my tip. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my curtains and it looks like I need to trim the bottoms off of this just a little bit. So I'm going to lay it on and mark it with my pencil and cut off just this last little bit. And ink it. I'm just going to hand trim it. Then we'll do the other side. Just a tiny bit needs to be trimmed off. Let's double check, see how we did. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. And then if I have to make any final trims, um, I'll do it while it's on here. But so I'm going to hold off gluing down the last two bits um, until I get this placed. And then if we need to cut a little more off, it'll be easy enough to peel it up from the bottom and make that happen. You have to kind of work fast because the chipboard is so thirsty. The glue dries really quickly. Okay. Be careful not to drop it, right? with my glue. Sorry about that. Okay, hold that into place for a little bit. Look, I need to cut just a little bit off, which is why I didn't want to glue that down. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to put a bead down. I drank too much coffee today. I'm shaking. much glue. Okay, I'm going to look at the other side. And it's a little short, but I'm okay with that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in an arc over the bow that's below it. Going to be that easy to do because there's a chipboard behind it. 
There we go. Clean that up a little. Okay, and I really need to find my ink. So, what did I do with it? I'll pause and I'll be right back. Okay, I found it. I put it up. <laughs> I'm used to it just being out on the desk. There we go. And I think I needed to do just a tiny bit here. Okay, I'm going to glue that last bit down. Oh, by the way, um, I cardstock back the drapes just to make it a little easier to work with. I didn't do any of the other cut aparts, just the drapes. I wasn't sure. At first, I wasn't sure if I was going to put chipboard behind it. So there's black cardstock behind it right now. Okay. Okay, that's all in place. Now we've got our. Go ahead and add our. Nutcracker. He's grasping for words. Because of the way I had to cut around the drape, you need to move him over a little bit so you'll you'll see a slight shadow, and I think that's fine. I'm gonna glue down his. There we go. Just so it's less likely to snag. Okay, and now it's time to add the ballerina. This is another one to cardstock back if you if you have time to fussy cut. Just because there's so many tiny elements, the reinforcement's a good idea. Sometimes the other thing I do is I'll just um, put a thin layer of glue across the whole back, um, and then it makes this paper that much more rigid because there's these little bits can get um, snagged. Okay, here we go. Isn't that pretty? I love Dimension. I could sp spend a week on a cover. Um, I, mean, I don't have that luxury anymore. <laughs> okay, so that's starting to come together. So the last thing I want to add, I think, down here, I have this one, and I had a larger one, this one, so I need to make a decision. I think that looks too... I don't know, too big. What do you guys think? And then this is just a little smaller, less obvious. I think I'm going to use this one. Less obvious piece. So I'm going to leave a little bit of openings around the edges because I might tuck some other elements behind it. Okay, so that covers up that swath of nutcracker that was that we cut through to make the cover. Okay, I might use this someplace else. And then the last thing is we're going to add this purple strip here that says nutcracker sweet. And that's going to go right here. I'm trying to decide if I want it to go. I think I want it this way. So Nutcracker Suite will read from the top down. And I'm just leaving a slight gap between the black, or between the cover image and this. Okay, and I'm gonna pause here, do a little housekeeping, come back and we'll do the spine and the back. Back soon. 
Hey everyone. So here's what I've decided to do. I'm going to do a half wrap. So I am going to have this purple and have it come around. This is from the 8x8 collection pack. So all I did was trim it down in height. It's 8 inches. And then once I wrap it around, I'm going to come up with my final design for this section here. And then we'll do a little bit of decorating and we'll be done. So what I've decided to do is make sure that the whole spine and coming around the corner is completely covered with tape. And um, I'm going to try gluing down the rest and putting a strip of tape on this side. You know what? Let me rethink that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and add tape all the way, all the way to the back. That's what I normally do. I was trying to find a shortcut, and I should stop doing that. Uh, where's my tape tear tool? I can't function without it. Here it is, right in front of my face. Okay, so um, one of the things um, that I found that makes this successful is to vary the width of the tape. So right around the corner, I've got a 5 8 uh, Either side is a quarter inch, then a 5 8 3 8 3 8 quarter inch, quarter inch. That allows the paper to stretch instead of crack um, because we're creating basically additional spaces for the paper to have some level of movement. If it's completely, and I've done this um, with a, a full sheet of adhesive, and um, that'll cause it to crack because it won't move. It won't be able to, to stretch. Um, it was also very difficult to handle, but I did try once using just a full sheet of adhesive and then wrapping it. I wasn't successful. So something to keep in mind. So I'm going to focus on getting the spine and this corner done first. And so I'm only going to remove the tape. Um, that's too wide. So let's go back to my 3 8 I'm going to only remove uh, the tape here and around the corner. And then I'll start additionally adding or, or removing the tape back covers as I lay it into place. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, it will in just a moment when you actually watch me do it. Okay. I'm going to burnish this all really quick. It just makes taking the backing off that much easier. And I did form um, the sheet by laying it across here and just bending it with my hands um, to kind of train the paper that it's going to go around this corner. I did not score it. I've done that before and I haven't been happy with the results because it's too obvious. Okay. I'm going to start by taking off... Um, right here where it's going to, uh, here to here where it's going around the corner. There we go. And I like to go from my right to my left because I'm left-handed. Now I'm not dragging my hand back over the tape. Most of you probably have figured that out over time. There we go. So we're going to stand it on its end. Oops. It shifted. It shifted on me. I'm going to turn it sideways. So I'm focused right now getting it centered top to bottom. You can see it's drifting down, so I'm going to try again. Oh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it up without tearing it. That's another reason why I like to do a little at a time, is it will allow you to adjust. A little it's shifted a little I'm going to try to correct some of it just by stretching and pulling but I do think it's going to go on a little crooked 
So that's just the way it's going to be. The alternative is to use your undo and lift it up, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> it's too much tape. Um, what I can do, though, is straighten it out with an X-Acto knife so that it looks more consistent. So I have a, a, a larger gap here. I can straighten this side out with an X-Acto knife. Well, I won't be straightening it. I'll be adjusting it. Oh, this is... Um, a clear sign of just fatigue too when you do something crooked <laughs> it might be time to take a break but I don't have time we're running out of time for Christmas so here forward I'll take off two at a time oh it's later than I thought my son just got home Okay, and as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to take a break and come up with the last bit of design here. Okay, and hopefully you guys had a better result than me. Not as crooked as mine. The other thing we could do is run um, a strip, a border strip to um, mask some of that. I do like the overall look, though, the way it's going to come around and have the purple here and here. So be back soon. Okay, everyone, I've chosen this um, to cover the second half of this panel, and um, this did go in crooked, so I do have a bit of a solution to try to minimize that. So let's go ahead and lay this down first. I went ahead and cut this very square with 90 degree corners, and then we're going to use a sticker to join the two, and that should help soften um, the fact that this is, uh, I put this in crooked. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm going to center this top to bottom so you can see that's what a straight one should look like and you can see how far off I am here. Not very far off down here so it could be that I just didn't get a straight cut here, not sure. So what I'm going to do to try to mask some of this is I'm going to use this sticker here to join the two seams and um, I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. It's not all the way down. I'm using uh, the line on the pattern as a guide to install it. Yeah, and you can see it just softens a little bit. I'm going to cut that tiny little edge off and then it'll be just a little dip here so you don't see a sharp corner. And it's not perfect, but it's an improvement. Easier said than done. It's hard to do because it's not flat. Okay. There we go. So you can still see the graduation here, but it's not as bad. Okay, and then we've got one straight side. So that is that, and then we're gonna add a couple more embellishments. Okay, I'm gonna use um, this sticker with the nutcracker. It's gonna go right here. I'm gonna overlay slightly off center. And I'm gonna add this guy. trying to decide if this is too big or not. I don't like anything else. Let's get these stickers. Actually, I like this guy better, but yeah, I'm going to change that up a little. See if I can peel it up. Usually the stickers come up pretty easy without tearing the paper provided you have the right tool to lift. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. 
Okay, that worked out pretty well. So I think I want to use my circle because I love circles. And then I wish I had a different frame. I don't like that. I don't want to put purple on there. That's too much purple. I don't know I like this one. Do that. Oops, that's very crooked. <laughs> I can't see straight today, I don't think. I'm going to call it done. So the next time we get together, we're going to work on the inside liners. Be back soon. Okay, here's what I decided to do. These two red pieces are from the 8x8 eight eight collection pack. And the soldiers are from, let me verify this, but I believe they're from the 12x12. 12 12. Um, hmm. I got to find Just a minute. Sorry about that. Yes. Okay. I had to find a, a full strip to, to verify the scale. So the soldiers or the nutcrackers are from the 12 by 12. And um, this piece is from the 8 by 8 collection pack. And I'm just going to join these two things together. And then I'm going to soften the edge by putting um, uh, cut apart right here. Oh, my thumb's just not working. It's raining here, so... It's given my hands fits. So um, as I proceeded with the design, turns out that I actually did use two 8x8s eight eight and one 12x12. Twelve twelve. Two 8x8s eight eight and one 12x12. Twelve twelve. And I'm gonna, and you're going to have some 8x8s eight eight left over, and I'm okay with that because I'm going to make um, some tags out of my uh, remaining papers. Um, but if you're willing to do some color blocking, you could definitely get this album done with a one 8x8 and one 12x12. 12 12. Um, but because I am trying to get this out quickly, um, color blocking takes a lot more time. So I've minimized how much color blocking was in this album, even though that's one of my favorite design techniques. Now I've got some cut aparts that I already cardstock backed. That I set aside and I want to use uh, the two that come to mind is one is a nutcracker and one is um, a clock. Okay, here they are. So I'm going to use the clock and I'm going to use 
this guy over here. And I really like the look of that. So <sighs> I got to think about this for a second. I think I'm going to slide them over to cover about, you know, halfway um, the image. So it's going to be centered. I think I want to put the clock in the front and him in the back. But it's really just preference. I'm going to center him left to right, top to bottom. This is one of my favorite images in the whole thing. So I like that when you open it, that's going to be the first thing you see. Such a pretty image. Okay, now while we're here too, we're going to go ahead and install um, page one. And I'm only going to do page one and I'll do the rest offline. This is going to be page one. Isn't she pretty? So it looks like I haven't put my tape down. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we're going to install that. And then you'll just repeat that process for the other four. And that way I can get the upload started on this page. Got a really serious shadow in my space right now. Usually, the studio light will bounce some light over off the wall. It's not happening today for some reason. It's very dreary here, raining outside actually, which is good. We need it. Okay. Let's set aside these other cut aparts. Clean the visual workspace here. Okay. So I like to slip it over and then reach in with my pick tool and pull out the tape backing. So that's what I'm going to do. It's really tight because uh, of the double fold here. If you have trouble, one of the things that you can do to ease the pressure is to open this, and that will help. Okay, now before I try to go in and pull my tape, I'm gonna close it all up again. Okay, I'm looking for even borders top to bottom. Once I complete the album, um, I may I am going to probably let's see. Did I shift? Go back and maybe add some ribbon to the front, but I haven't decided exactly how to do that yet. Okay, so that's how you do a page install, and we're just going to repeat that process three more times. To finish the book, I also this is also one of my favorite cut aparts, the um, monogram. Okay, so I'll be back. Um, oh no, look what I just did. I put it in upside down. Oh my gosh, so I have to use some undo and redo it. I'm going to do that offline so you guys know what's going on. I did everything upside down. That really stinks. So I'm going to have to fix that, and that's a rookie mistake. So I'll correct those, and then um, you'll see that in the walkthrough. Okay, everybody, I fixed my problem. I feel like such a dummy, but it happens. Um, so again, this is our cover, and now everything on the inside is right side up. So I had to use an alternative pattern because I couldn't lift it because I glued it down. So this is from the 8x8, and this is also from the 8x8. Um, so I'm glad I opened that second pack of 8x8 so I had some options to work with. Um, this is also from the 8x8. I was able to salvage um, these two cut aparts because they were on cardstock. I was able to lift them, um, so I was pretty happy about that. But the rest of it, you know, I used um, the undo 
to uh, lift the tape and remove it because I'd originally installed it on the other side. So now it's back in, in the right position. I just really wanted to show you this quick clip to show you that I had used an alternative here on the inside and back front and back cover. So that's it for now. I'm going to take a break because I obviously need one. <laughs> I'll be back soon um, and we'll do the walkthrough.